And so if you're new to this, Zysquad community is where it happens. A lot of the requests and kind of questions I cover in the videos are usually coming from there. And this one was very interesting. My issue is this now. I have been applying to interesting roles for maybe one to two months. That is nothing. Apply more. Around 50 or 70 applications. Okay, that's quite a lot. Probably you're not tailoring them. It's another thing which I suggest to do or maybe refer to other videos where I cover that. And haven't received a single interview. This is a massive hit and I would be very surprised why. You should have been interviewing already. I'm assuming something is wrong with my resume. We're gonna check that out in a minute. Seniority, probably UX mid or senior roles, UX architect jobs, location, very specific to, um, I don't know about Baltimore or Maryland area, but it also could be location bound. Certain areas in the world, maybe not USA, but you know, in, in other global areas, there could be lack of openings by default. And also post COVID markets are chaos. So is another thing to consider. It could be also limiting factor. And company type, they're looking for sometimes agency, sometimes large corporations, and then unsure of the industry, which is fine. But as a senior, you should be a bit sure about your industry because you should have quite a few case studies which are in different industries by default. Maybe you worked in one job, but it's quite uncommon that you spend like a decade just doing one thing in one industry. Now, the actual resume is three pages which is not a red flag. And typically when the people open PDF and they scroll down, they don't really see, you know, pages. They just see that it takes too long to get to the gold or, you know, the journey is too long. As you can see, there is an intro, there is a lengthy work history with a lot of information, some project examples too, then selected projects, then the experience as well, which is additional experience, and then the skill sets. And as you can see, I marked out a lot of those things. Again, referring to the previous videos would help. It's just making everything more succinct and sellable. Senior UX designer, founder, why I question this and why I question your seeding, funding or startup experience is that it's going to work well for startups if you apply for startups, but you said yourself in the beginning that you are not. So unless you tailor your resume for startups or startup positions, which you should tailor, make sure to clean it up a bit because it's not going to resonate. If it's not part of the role, why would you even highlight it? Same for the intro, it should really sell you for that specific role, for that specific position in agency or corporate, which you want. What was good about your examples in work history, as you can see, it's external links to the actual brands, is that it's short introduction of what it allows people to do, collection, yada, yada. I would probably paraphrase those introductions to be more human-centered or UX-oriented, like what's the benefit for the business, but also the user. Again, co-founder and UX architect are two different things. If you're applying for startups, leave a co-founder. If not, consider if you just want to kind of take it out of the way because you're doing a lot of hat wearing, which one is the heaviest hat, which is going to contribute to you getting that job because you're looking for jobs, not another startup to join, I presume. Very, very lengthy descriptions everywhere. And so don't add these things, which is expected of you to do. Drive with wins. If there are no wins, shorten it and just add the one line. That's good enough. And this is, I guess, one of the pitfalls because people think, oh, if I'm apply for corporates, it has to be reasonably tied into ATS systems. And in a way it's true, but if you add a skill section somewhere on a side or you leave those skills, you add it in the bottom, that's gonna get picked up anyway. So you don't have to repeat the same keywords again and again. And again, the format of the actual resume could be shortened and much more succinct. Crafted prototypes and coordinated team testing and feedback sessions for iterative design optimization. What was the result? Give me the result. Don't tell me what you did. What was the actual outcome and impact? Yeah, this is part of a UX job anyways. Why are you telling me that? Tell me more. Tell me exactly what was the return. Another bit here, successful UX production with clients XYZ, yada, yada, yada to improve, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Just tell me our clients included these services. 
good enough because you did UX for them. If you just repeat that you did UX production for those clients, you're repeating yourself. It's all redundant. Save that space, add something more, which is going to again contribute to you landing that job. Simple as that. Also, consider these things. I added this by way back in the day. Why does this matter to me? Consider why would hiring managers need to know about these things? For example, collaborative to the design labs seem to resolve challenges, yada, yada. Who are they? Why, why would I care that you collaborated? Just say that you manage stakeholders in different teams successfully, establish partnerships in five different areas within the business. And so is with all the other bits. You have a lot of web animation development experience. Consider how do you frame those things. Your role could be one thing. The things you do within the role could be a lot of different things. Highlight those things which are relevant to the actual job application or the seniority you're seeking. Um, sometimes you just might need to take that development out if it doesn't add any value. Sometimes you might need to add it if the job requires that. As long as you did those things, highlight what's relevant and nothing else. And so all of this all of this, all of these pages could be cleaned up and again, landed in like a half a page. Can you add more metrics to this? Measures, outcomes, impact from a business perspective, from the user experience perspective, if you test it and got some results, maybe it's usability metrics or something along those lines, efficiency measures, add those in, enrich this, and then trim down to absolutely nothing. Trim down to another 20% and then you're gonna arrive at something which is actually worth to be on your resume. But your projects are great. WordPress Gutenberg UX designer contributor. Again, it should be shorter. You could just add literally notable projects, one bullet point, that's your project. That's it. If you wanted to find out more, we're gonna interview and you're gonna discuss it. Add the link as well, if it adds some word to a result. Add the link to a case study maybe. Make it easier for them. Don't let me just read a book here. Same applies to your selected projects. Too much, you know, one line tops, Go from process focus to outcome focus, and that's a general theme. Now, this is also page three already, and you're still talking about your experience. Nominations, you could also bring that way forward because it means that those projects were actually good enough to be nominated or submitted for those results. Even if you didn't win it, who cares? You could also put it under awards instead of nominations, even if it's a nominee, because like the actual overarching category is still award submissions. And when training and cert certifications, this is meh, no need for it. Just add that you are very skilled in Scrum Master responsibilities and working in Agile, basically listing the skills out. And now, let me show you how I would transform your resume. Again, without spending too much time on this. Okay, so I took one of the vanilla templates and actually a template I used in the past myself. So a lot of the things I'm hiding is actually my skills, but because again, they're much more high level than what you need to get that senior position, I hid it with the actual blocks. I could maybe show you the specific skills, let's say, bam. These are the skills I'm adding because that's what my experience entails. It doesn't matter for you, maybe something is gonna resonate, but because I've been leading, managing, establishing design capabilities, I learned a lot of, took a lot of courses, I just add those as a list to nip it in the bud. And again, skills and expertise, where is it? Other notable work, is where you would put your projects. My book, Experience Design Podcast is another project. Again, I'm hiding it because it's not relevant to you. You need to think of how do you actually do this and represent that information. But your project Gutenberg and WordPress contributions would go under that notable work. And going again from the back, uh, education is where you could put your degrees or something along those lines if you have any. If you don't, just bin it. In my head, you are a senior UX designer, entrepreneur, with over 10 years experience in user-centered design. You can craft it, you can tweak it as you wish, but that's what you are in my head. Email, LinkedIn, website, portfolio link maybe. Again, this is exactly how my resume looks like right now. I haven't updated in years, but this is how it would look like. Awards is where you would put your nominations, recent work experience, myself personally, I have three most recent and they could be quite lengthy, they could be not. Again, everything is driven by the actual outcomes. But I also tell the recruiters if you really, or hiring managers, if you really wanna see more, click this link and see my LinkedIn 
or we can chat about it, inviting them to act on it if they're interested. And that one provides a one pager because what you have is like, I guess, a European CV, which is extensive list of everything you did so far. Trim it down to something super effective, which basically would summarize it more instead of having like a chaos of me going through this massive jungle of information and the signals which might be rightful, but I'm doing the heavy lifting instead of you doing the heavy lifting as applicant, but you should be doing that. Make it easy for hiring managers to make that decision. You need to tailor your resumes instead of just going with one and trying to kind of get those 70 people or 70 teams companies to commit to you. If it didn't work already after five or 10 applications, you're doing something very wrong. There should have been some sort of results. It means that the actual means are not right or not tailored enough. Sorry to interrupt future me here. By means, I meant your portfolio, your cover letter, perhaps your LinkedIn profile, perhaps your resume, but it's usually a combination of all. So, you know, just because you're going to update your resume, it could work. It might not work because there could be a lot of other factors. So you need to again consider, but generally test it with different combinations, basically reapply if you need to. If you make changes to the actual resumes, you can reapply. People are still going to review and they're going to forget your name anyway. So don't hold yourself back. And if you like this video, make sure to join the actual community on Discord. And on that note, I'll see you next time.